will do. I will. I don't want to buy equipment that's not for sale. That's the thing. So you can either get subsoiler, you can get a spader, or you can get a plow. Uh, we have 205 horsepower, so um, yeah, we can use that one. That's the biggest plow we can use. Two and a half meter working width, 12 kilometers an hour maximum speed. The spader. Holy cow, lots of power. This is four and a half meters, much wider, but two thirds of the speed. So it's a lot slower. And finally, subsoilers. Um, we can normally go for this one. It's four meters wide. It's not as wide as the spader, but it's faster. Two thirds, you know, 50% faster. So that's four. If the spader was six, Spade is four and a half. Mm. And again, that's 58,000, but we're renting. But I think saving money, we're going to go with this. Um, can't go with these. You need 500 horsepower for those. So we'll take that. Details, lease, yes, okay, back, done, back, and should have taken the front loader, actually I'll leave the front loader arms here, we'll collect them when we get something that needs a front loader, um, select the front loader arms to drop them, I am going to need a weight, and I didn't look at that, so subsoilers doesn't have a combination okay well from past experience I figure we want about a thousand kilos so it's the W900 there's the 1800 that's way too big Oh, let's get the 900. Oh, hello. Oh, it can be 900 or it can be 1500. Well, that's... Yay and no. We'll stick with the 9. We'll buy that because we are going to use that, I think, fairly frequently. And we need to go forwards. So the moment I need pallet forks or something like that, the front loader's here. We can just attach it to our tractor and uh, take it with us. But right about now, we are going to do with the field work with leased equipment. Um, and I need the weight on the front, which I just put down because that was the last thing attached. So select the doodad on the back. And we can get to ploughing our fields. Yay, ploughing. And no matter what you do, it's always the same. Um, going times one. Um, so when you start a new game, you have your, your in seasons on and one day is active um, or one day per month if you want to play longer I could change that now um, where's the seasons menu uh, not the seasons menu the, this menu is it that menu? no it's the tractor menu so I can change this to two days, three days all the way up to 28 days the thing is, is it won't take effect until midnight. So you are always going to play one day. I'll save it again. One day in August. When it gets to September, it will then look at the number of days per month you've got selected. And at that point, it will do... Um, 
it will decide, oh, we're doing two days. So if you want to do a one-day winter over December and January and February, then during the month of October, set it to one-day months. Probably on the last day, I would be inclined to say, to get it where you want it. This is going to be difficult to uh, figure out. Um, you know what I might do? I'm going to do this uh, north-south so that I can see the grain on the the cultiplow versus what yeah, this, this field is cultivated and the cultiplow leaves things out in a cultivated state so as you can see the grain runs east-west and as we drive north-south I can now see where I've been so we will do that easiest thing to do. I'm going to bump us up to three, three times. So the day is going to move along fairly quickly. That's fine. But really we do not have a lot that we have to get done today. Worker F has a nearly full grain tank. Yeehaw. Okay. I think Worker F did quite well. That's an interesting looking field in front of us as well. That could also be a potential. What is this? Squirrel. This is canola ready to harvest. Actually, that could be a really good field to harvest if we're going to go into oil production. But for right now, we need to get back up to the top of this field. and go grab our trailer. I think I'm leaving a big gap there. See, that's part of the problem with uh, I think if we look at this now, there'll be a couple of red lines on this field where I missed uh, uh, ploughing. So I might need to stick the worker on this one. Let's have a look. Raise. Uh, map. And yeah, you can see I missed a bit there, I missed a bit there. Um, I'm not sure a worker is going to work with this. Plus, let's just drop that where it is for now. And whoops go get the uh, trailer because the harvester is getting full. I'm impressed though, the harvester has done quite well clearing this field up. Well, okay, that's, that's a good news, bad news thing. It's got up to 79,000, so yay for that. The problem is... Um, or 75,000, I believe the uh, tank capacity is. Okay, 7,500 in that much of the field. Yields kind of crap. Yeah, since the harvester stopped there, what we're going to have to do is uh, turn the worker off back end because the only way to unload that is to drive all over the crops and kill stuff it's usually figured to be a bad idea anyway let's get this over the tipper And I'll go but get those bits that it missed along the edge and then we'll set the worker back. I actually I got a better idea. See if the worker can cope with uh, fixing the plough state on that field. If not, what I might do is set the worker off on the other field. Um, 
Which way around does that attach? Spiky side forwards. Let's try that. Now the other thing I could do to make this job a bit easier is maybe to lime the field if it needs it. I don't think it does. But if I put lime on the field then you can see where you've been and where you haven't. Yeah, see it's not. The message comes up, it, it's, it can't see the field. But I think that's primarily, well maybe that's because we already did that bit. It may be that what I should have done was get a plow because it would look at the field state and say this has been cultivated but it had you know you wanted me to plow it I need to leave it in a plowed state and yeah it's it's not a happy bunny with this so let's get back over here actually that trailer is looking kind of full let's fold that back in again So yeah, what you see there is the field is in a state of cultivated. So the worker looks at it and says, I don't need to do any work on this field, it's already done. So I can't use the cultiplow because the cultiplow's final state is um, cultivated. But it eliminates the ploughed state of the field. Whereas um, if I bought a plow, or if I'd leased a plow and attached that to the back, it would say I need to leave this field in a ploughed state. It's not currently in a ploughed state, therefore let's go ahead and run the plow. So anyway, I will try and get this lined up with the line it was on as best I can. And we'll set that back on a worker. Hello? Oh. Difficulty with my, uh, my thing. Um, and it doesn't, I guess it doesn't really matter if I miss parts of this field. Um, at the end of the day, so long as we eliminate most of the ploughed requirement, that will be fine. But we are then... Um, subsoilers make big rocks. These are classed as big rocks. They're very visible if you get a s uh, the other thing. Um, cultivator. They make small rocks. Small rocks are a little bit more difficult to see from distance. But anyway, we'll get this done. I might buy that bottom field there that's covered in canola. Just because it goes with our farm plan. Um, I'm also probably going to plant all of these fields, or this field and the one that the harvester's currently on with canola. Tomorrow we've got the choice of barley and uh, um, the other grain crop, wheat. And, you know, obviously it's good to diversify your crop, but I do want... Um, what is it? I want January to plant some uh, olives. So that does mean that I am going to have to um, not plant something in one of our fields. Or maybe I should have waited until January to buy a field. But I like, I like having the land, 
land you you know having land means that I can make money whenever I want having tractors means I can work the land but a tractor does not make me money so you know part of my thoughts here I could buy another tractor um, and that might help alleviate the stuff I'm doing around the farm but that's a hundred thousand more money in a tractor I definitely missed part of the road there didn't I yeah I'm missing all sorts of bits yeah as I said probably not critical so long as we get most of the field that's fine although it is a lot easier if you uh, if you're not cultivating a field that's already cultivated the annoyance here is because it's because um, it needs to be ploughed I don't think I also don't think subsoil as count as a plow in contracts. So I couldn't go off to another you know, pick up a ploughing contract and plough a field with a with a subsoiler. It just eliminates the needs to be ploughed state from a field. Also, think subsoilers do promote not only do they create big rocks they may also promote weed growth um, which is a little bit unfortunate yeah. I'll put that on autopilot for a minute uh, one of the things I was considering uh, where are cultivators see cultivators with 200 horsepower I can get some serious can't get that can't get that so I could get that which is five meters that's only four we could get a cultivator that whoops is five meters wide um, and drives a lot a lot faster than this thing does um, so it would let us get the rest of our fields done a lot quicker I'm gonna have to do this manually no matter what so going to get this done. Looks like our uh, harvest is nearly finished. But we could get a small cheap tractor. I think there are some. Um, and in fact the Fiat would probably work quite nicely. It's a little bit more usable than uh, the Farm Sim 19 version in that you can put small narrow tires on it which you know the one it, you can't fit a front loader I don't think that's a problem but maybe we could look for a uh, harvesting contract and I could leave this we, buy the bottom field. we could buy the bottom field and uh, just make a ton of canola and I'm going down pretty much the same path we just came up the reason I say that is because I can see the rocks ahead of us on on the line I'm driving here. So a bit a bit of a misstep there. Yeah, maybe I think okay. We will I will buy a silo. We will store the wheat. It's probably only about 10,000 liters. But that's 10,000 litres more than we had um, an hour and a half ago when we started at 8 o'clock in the morning. And then what I might do is I'll buy that canola field to the south of us and, uh, and we'll set the harvester loose on that as well. And we'll take the canola down to the oil mill and start making canola oil because that takes a while straight up here 
Now when I leave the farm, I think what we're going to do is... Um, start ploughing up the fields that we need to plough. And again, I think I've... Yeah, there's, there's stripes of bits that need ploughed. I'm not going to worry too much because it's... The, the, the penalty is... Is about 15% to the yield. Um, but it's small patches of the field, so it's not a huge deal. And if I plant something on the field that eventually plants something on the field that uh, needs to be um, ploughed after, so potatoes, sugar cane, sugar beets, or corn then it's not too much of an issue if we then just say, okay, um, we need to plough it because we planted a crop that forces us to need to plough it. Anyway, that is done. So, okay, we will buy the farmland. 42, covered in weeds, yay. Needs ploughed, yay. And needs lime. 40 needs lime too. Okay, that's two fields that need lime. Uh, that field there is kind of pricey. 146, but we have the money. So, map overview. No, buy. Yes. So, we are empty. I'll we'll fold that in. And the advantage is I will turn that off too. We can use the same header. So I can just set this thing loose at the bottom of the, uh, the yard and we're good. Um, I could just buy a... Uh, uh, what's it? An orchard tractor. That might be the way to go. Because if I'm going to do um, whatever I'm going to do, if I'm going to do olives, then I'm going to need an orchard tractor. So maybe we buy that now, and I can use that to haul around the uh, the car. So let's set you going. Now canola is a low volume crop. Not a big deal. Let's go back to the triple lines construction and I want some silos. Don't want those silos. Those are freaking expensive silos. These are quite expensive. These are cheaper and big but you need to have an auger to drop the grain in at the top and an auger to get the grain out into your trailer at the bottom. That's 40,000. But if you compare this is 400,000 litres to this is 980,000 litres, this is good value for money. But as I said, you would need to buy um, belt systems. This to get the grain in the top of it and this to get the grain out of it. There's a little pipe sticks out on the side. You would fill that up and drop it into our trailer. Don't need to go that way, but as I said, those two pieces of equipment are 40,000. And triple line construction silos 72, 80, 90, 100, 212. I th they'd still 5,000 5, cheaper, so I am going to buy this one. Hello. Okay, there it is. Uh, I think our farm is over here. So again, we'll rotate. make sure that actually what I can do is we can rotate it to the side we 
and put that there, or we could put it over there. Um, Mm. Actually, or there. I don't know. I'm going to put it over here. We take the view and drop that right there. We are going to need to bring some stuff back from the store with this. That's going well. Fourteen percent full. So, as I said, we want to do an olive grove. So we either need the Landini or the Fenvario two hundred. That can be up to a hundred horsepower, which would make it functional elsewhere. This is one hundred twelve. That can still work. So what's the difference? That's 77, that's 39. Why well, you go for the 39,000 one? Just because it's cheaper. Um, so what do we need to put on this? Michelin's standard wheels, three point on the front. Okay, so you can either have a three point on the front or not. If you don't, well, it, it's a thing. Um, we can bump the horsepower up, 76, 90, 95, 102, 112. Prices, 95 is 12,000, 90, uh, yeah, okay. Um, it can be blue or shiny blue, ooh, that's fancy. Rim colours can be grey or black, no, I like the grey. I do like the shiny blue, although it does cost us fifteen hundred. We'll do that. Okay, buy that. We have a nice shiny um, tractor, and we also want belt systems. I want. Well, let's get that one because we kind of need to empty the silo right now, or the the tipper right now. We don't need to empty the silo. Let's get back to the store. Oh, I still need to do that, don't I? Uh, you know what we can do? Let's lift that up. No. Again, I think I said I don't need to plough this field, but it's what I've rented. And I don't want to, you know, I paid for the rental on this, so I might as well make use of it. If I wasn't, um, you know, if, if I was playing a little bit more money, money is no object, get a cultivator. Because we could do twice the width, uh, twice the speed. I'll set that running. Alright, we will now jump over to the store where our new, nice new shiny blue tractor is. Captain Zank, good morning. Welcome to France, Farm Sim 22. And there we go. We got ourselves a little. Ooh. This is going to be an interesting little uh, vehicle to drive by the looks of it. As I said, the plan is to make an olive grove. On one of our fields, and I'm not decided which one. I might do the one directly to the south of the farmhouse or the yard. And we'll leave the three fields that we own along this road for arable crops. Anyway. And yes, that's <laughs> that's a long piece of equipment. Uh, where's this is my farm entrance. And yep, we just hit a tree. Okay, so we detach that, and as I understand it, much like Farm Sim 19, 
you can climb into a belt. Uh, oh, helps if I push the right button. So I'm going to need the help open, so bear with me. 